Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight, I have a little bit of a triple header for you. I'm going to be releasing three videos, kind of back to back to back to back, all in one day. And uh, I hope you enjoy them because Catalyst just put out a bunch of lens packs that have been hotly anticipated. First one, Snowboards Irregulars, the Assault Lance. The second, and of course, for me, obviously the most important for meme value, the Urban Mech Lance. And last but not least, this big old box, the uh, proliferation cycle. And I said that right this time. Look at that. All right, cool. So we got that out of the way. And uh, as ever, I purchased these from Aries Miniatures and Games. Uh, not sponsored. Uh, just they had what I needed and uh, bought them. And they got shipped really fast and it was like magic so uh, that being said let's get on to the first one that we're going to look at which is snords irregulars i did crack this one open because i didn't want to look like a doofus uh trying to open this box on camera so here we have the cards let's see so we've got four pilot cards and four Four pilot cards and four alpha cards. So, first ones first. Do we have Mateo Orloff, David Rausch, Afit, McGravian, Rhonda Snord, Elizabeth Lizzie Sneed, Samuel Shorty Sneed, Sneed's Wheat and Feed, uh, Edmund Rides, Rids? I think that's a D. Yeah, that's a D. And Alexandria Natasha Snort. Three guesses who she's named after. And then we have our Alpha Strike cards. We got our Guillotine. Ooh, let's see if I can't do something. There we go. Uh, the Guillotine 7M. Ooh. The Guillotine 3N. The Highlander 694. And the 732. The Sneed 2 Hybrid Rifleman and uh, uh, RFL 3N uh, Hybrid Rifleman. No, look at that. It's Rainbow. It's Pride Month. Wow, look at that. Um, Spartan and Spartan. So that's all of our paperwork. So let's bust into these. Max, now there's a couple interesting things that I noticed about this Lance pack right away is that they included. A jumping part and you're thinking to yourself oh this obviously is for the Highlander right wrong we've already done that bit it's not funny anymore so what else what other back jumps in this Lance pack if you said the guillotine ding 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 and as you can see pop him right off his base and then that and then he's got two big two big kind of mail slots you slip right in and bam doesn't look unnatural sort of it's got the nice natural arc to the foot the other foot is kind of this kind of flat oh it's kind of like the toe is like pushing off the ground for like a step but yeah it's close enough close enough for government work so there's that and then trying to, I should have probably done this before I turned the camera on, but I'm trying to find the jump jet part for the Highlander. Ah, here we go. Because he's also going to be kind of pertinent to the conversation, so it's a really swish. And of course, if you don't like it, it is just a friction fit, so if you want to, you can just pop it, pop it on and off the base, which gives you some interesting display options. If you want to flex your muscle, your painting muscle, and you want to do uh, like an OSL uh, lighting effect, you know, you can do that. Then you have the Highlander, which is this just this monstrosity heavy gauss rifle. Uh, no SRM, some medium lasers, and of course the jump jets. And before I forget about it, comparisons. 
So we've got <clears throat> the standard rifleman, and as you can see, is the heavy Gauss rifle takes up a lot of room. So there's the standard rifleman, or the Highlander, excuse me. And then this is the our other rifleman from the Northwind Highlanders box. And this is the one with the uh, terrain piece and uh, the three pegs that you can kind of slot in as far as the, the jump effects go. Obviously not fit tight all the way, so. So there's your three flavors of riflemen, or Highlanders, I keep calling them riflemen. Uh, and then just going back real quick to this little fella, because when you want to compare him to the standard Lance Pack guillotine, again, identical loadouts as far as I can tell, nothing new or otherwise interesting about them, it's just different, different guillotine. So that's that. And then uh, a mech that is unique. This Lance Pack actually has two mechs that are unique to it, which is kind of unusual for these Lance Packs. Usually we only get like a couple of reposes, uh, a rerun of one of them, and then you have the unique mech. In this case, the Highlander is different enough to be considered a unique mech for me because it's just so radically different. Then you have the Rifleman, whatever the hell this is. And then you have the Spartan, and the Spartan is truly a unique mech. This is a Starly Gara mech. Uh, it's nice, solid, all-arounder. Uh, just nice, big, chunky boy. Uh, really good revisualization of this miniature compared to the original Dwayne Lusart. So I'm really, really happy to see that this guy got another chance at life under, under the Scroggins design review. So I'm really happy about that. And then of course, this thing, this, this mongrel abomination, uh, which is a rifleman, a warhammer, and an archer, all just kind of bodged together. But Dr. Bonsai, you beautiful human being and proprietor of mech information, you, I hear you say, where's the Phoenix Hawk head? Where's the radar antenna for the later version of the Rifleman, I hear you say? Well, apparently, it's packed in the same bag as you would get like a dime, as you would get like a grandma fentanyl. So, there we go. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. Now, uh, unlike the other items in this box where you have kind of the op uh, option, like for the guillotine, you can kind of pick it on and off, this, off the base. You kind of have to commit to glue with this. So, of course, you get the, if I can get that to focus, the Phoenix Hawk head is incredibly tiny and basically more or less seats right there if you can kind of visualize that basically it's going to be covering this well no not really until catalyst puts out some sort of like assembly guide for this on their website i doubt we'll actually know the proper way to configure that oh so there's that and then you have the simple, you know, the standard standard fin, uh, targeting fin that you would get with most. And that just kind of fits in there. And of course, it doesn't glue in because there's no, uh, it is just like a, like a forward slot. It's not got anything like this. And a couple of real curiosities for me because I'm not sure where they're supposed to go. I have an idea that these are effect parts. Uh, I don't know where they would go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, see if that lines up, and that may be... Whew, you really do not want to lose these. These are just agonizingly small. So to kind of like like that. I know my fat, big fat fingers are getting in the way, but that's more or less what I think they're trying to go for. And of course, I have no I have no real way of knowing that because there is some kind of like you see this weird striped or striated texture, almost like it's implying some sort of 
some sort of mechanical element there. So like, I feel like these should live someplace, but until Catalyst puts out a PDF, a little, a little instruction sheet for these guys, I'm just gonna, gonna put all of this back in, in my, in my gram baggie. All right, I'm gonna just hang on to that. So there you are, folks. Oh, I forgot to do the comparisons for uh, the regular. Archer. Warhammer? Hmm. Uh -huh. So, to make sure that I've got all the different iterations of the uh, Shorty Sneed's Rifleman covered, I got an example of all the uh, component mechs. So, so, obviously the the legs have some shared architecture. Architecture, you can see the torso is very similar. And then you have, you know, more riflemen, which is made from 100% free range, organically grown, grass-fed riflemen. Not this, not this GMO monster. Um, Phoenix Hawk for when you have the Phoenix Hawk head attached. It seems like it would actually fit. Then you have one archer, two archer, three archer, and finally a more different archer. So that's, so the fact that he took one of these, one of these, one of these, and one of these to make his mech, that's pretty, that's pretty breathtaking. That's, yeah, so. Um, now, the real question, would I give this a buy? It's like a three out of five. It's not, it's not something where I'm like, I would kill myself not if I didn't have it, or if it was somehow went away and out of stock and whatever, and it was just was never able to get it again. Would I, would they be like, would I just say, oh yeah, this is a, sorry, camera got caught there. Is this a one and done type thing? Uh, you'll never see this again, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine, fair, whatever. But would would it just break my heart? And I was like, oh, I'm totally missed out. Nah, probably not. But that's me. You know, my perception of value with regards to these mechs and whatnot is different than, than some folks. But you know, personally, me, eh. take it or leave it. It's fine. No, no big deal. Um, I like the I like the Spartan. Uh, I really like the uh, the juiced up Highlander with the heavy Gauss rifle. Uh, the heavy Gauss rifle is, is always it's always good for uh, for a giggle. Um, the the Sneed's Rifleman though I think is I just like this thing because it's pure battle tech because it's it's literally that thing that you think about when you think succession wars like ah oh, the inner sphere they're you know fielding anything and everything they can and it's, you know, bashed together from spit and string and this, that, and the other thing. It's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, I vibe with this. And it kind of, and again, it, it makes sense, right? So when like, you're looking at something like that, it's like, well, yeah, you know, this is, this mech looks like a mess because literally the story behind Shorty Sneed uh, getting his, his mech was that he labeled a bunch of shipping containers on a contract the regulars were doing he labeled them as foodstuffs or something like that and the combine or whoever the irregulars were working for at the time were like oh no, seems reasonable <laughs> they just trucked pieces of these three to three four different mechs and by some some just absolute miracle this mechanical genius which is the only thing i could say that this guy would possibly be classified as managed to bash it together into a coherent thing that actually did work for the irregulars and it wasn't just like a silly ha ha this is this thing performed horribly it's like no this thing did some work it stacked some bodies for the uh it stacked some serious bodies for the irregulars and i kind of like that because it's just so silly in battle tech so um i really like i really like it but you know, that aside, if you're looking for, 
you know, mechs that are specific to your uh, two swords regulars and your swords fan, yeah, yeah, I would say get it. It's a good, solid purchase. But if you're just kind of like a general mercenary player or like a general spear player, yeah, maybe give it a miss. It's not that big a deal. Not that big a deal. Uh, again, three out of five. So on to the next one, which is everybody's favorite. The Urban Lance. All right. Have a good evening, guys. We'll talk to you.